Hi guys, Yannick here from Yannick's Photo School, back in Photoshop. Uh, you'll notice that I have CS4 now installed, but that won't matter for this tutorial because it's something pretty generic we're doing today, and it's called how to create a panorama using multiple shots and merging them in Photoshop with Photoshop's photo merge function. All right, I want to first of First of all, I apologize for the sound quality. I'm on Windows 7 release client and they haven't updated my sound drivers yet for my motherboard. So I'm using my uh, webcam microphone. Now that out of the way, let's get right to it. The first thing you need to do is take some shots to create a panorama. Now, of course, if you want to be really precise, you can use a tripod and, and have the, the shots all nice like that. But you don't really need to do that because Photoshop is pretty smart. And um, I'll give you an example of a handheld panorama uh, that I did in Times Square, and that's the one we'll be doing today. So I basically stood in the center of Times Square and shot out, oh, I forget how many shots. Let's have a look here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten shots. Um, and all handheld, I just kind of spun around and took the shots and Photoshop did its magic without a problem. You'll see that it's pretty easy to do in Photoshop. It's a couple of clicks and it'll be done. So let's get right to it. First of all, we need to go to File, Automate, Photo Merge. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, I always select in terms of the layout here on the side, Auto and it does a really good job. So I just leave it on auto and everything goes well. Now you can go get your files or a specific folder where all your images are in and then just click browse and just select your files by selecting the first one, holding down your shift key, selecting the last one, clicking OK and they'll all appear in the box here. Now if you had them all opened in Photoshop before uh, all you would need to do is click this button called Add Open Files and would import them automatically there. Now what I like to tick down here is to blend images together. Logical, isn't it? Well, that's what we're going to be doing. Now if, you, if your images had some vignetting around it, either because of a lens hood or just the way the lens is, you could click on Vignette Removal and it would do that. Geometric Distortion Correction, um, you know what? Uh, if you're shooting on a fisheye, that might be an option, or a wide-angle lens. Uh, I was shooting with my 1020 Sigma. Um, there is some slight distortion, but I don't mind it, so I don't, I don't click this box at all. Once you've done that, just click OK and see the magic being done. Now, I'm on a dual-core processor here, so it'll take a while, but I'll edit that out. Great, there we go. Our panorama's done. It took about 45 seconds. And you can see that the stitchings did a pretty good job. Let's zoom in at 100% and scroll through. You can see the buildings. It's nice. There's no jagged edges. Everything looks good. Zipping through it. All the building details are there. Awesome! Now, the next step we need to do, as you can see, it's all crooked and everything, so we just need to crop that. And also, we have some duplication here. We have the Lion King's head here. We see it there. So we'll try to make this uh, as 360 as possible and not over that. All right, let's start cropping. We want as much as we can in, in this image. So right about here for the bottom looks good. For the top... This looks good right here. And like I mentioned about the lion's head, we want to crop that out just a little bit here, right about there. Double click, and there we have our 360 panorama of Times Square. Now, before we get into post-processing, let me bring the layers palette over so that you can have a look at it. There you go. You can see that it created uh, 10 layers here, one for each image. Uh, and what we want to do is flatten that up before we start post-processing. That way it just makes it easier on your CPU. So you can go into up in here into layer, flatten image, and there we go, we can start post-processing. Now I always do a duplicate layer, control J, before I start post-processing. And I'm going to be using a filter that uh, 
I've used on the images on the Brooklyn Bridge called Topaz Adjust. Quite a few of you figured that out and you put it in the comments as well, which is great. I love this software. It's an HDR-like software, but a lot more powerful. Um, it's not just for uh, HDR-like images. You have all sorts of presets here. I won't go into This is not a tutorial about Topaz Adjust, but um, I always like to select this, uh, this last one here, Desaturates, and it has an HDR feel to it. So I just click OK after that, and there's the effect. If you find the effect too strong, um, you can just reduce the opacity of that layer. I like it full blown, so I'll leave it at that. It nice, gives it a nice gritty feeling. Now, I could punch the blacks up a little bit more, so I'll just go into Curves, Control M, just take my black point down, Maybe that's a little too much, right about there. And maybe a little bit of uh, vibrance. Just some vibrance in there, just to boost the colors up just a little bit. I won't go into saturation, but just vibrance here. And before and after, oh, very subtle, I like it that way. And that would be my final panorama image of New York City, of Times Square. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create a panorama through photo merge in Photoshop. This is Yannick Schoenig signing out for Yannick's Photo School. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.